as professionals, you can readily understand the need for updated training and information on important topics relating to your job and health. Today, this program helps meet this challenge by reviewing information you need to protect yourself and others when working with hazardous materials and chemicals. You work with hazardous materials and chemicals every day. Cleaning supplies, pesticides, soaps, detergents, solvents, gasoline, and many others. You name it, they're all part of your job. You use these same basic chemicals in your home. Are you at risk by using chemicals? Well, there's no one specific answer to the question. We can't possibly cover all chemical hazards, but we simply want to provide some basic information to help reduce health hazards. A hazardous chemical is any chemical that poses a physical or health hazard. Physical hazards include combustible liquids, compressed gas, explosive or flammable liquids, or oxidizers. Health hazards include those chemicals creating acute or chronic health effects. Basically, anything that can damage the eyes, lungs, skin, or mucous membranes. All this tells you is practically every chemical at home or work presents a potential physical or health hazard. Of course, each chemical has varying degrees of hazards, and for that reason, it's critical for you to read and follow the instructions and warning labels on all chemicals. Gasoline is a physical and health hazard, and it's used safely by millions of people. Learn the hazard and take the steps necessary to avoid the risks. This program is called Hazard Communications, Your Right to Know. More importantly, it's your need to know. You already have an understanding of the chemicals you use at home and work, and you should be aware that some chemicals can be hazardous to your health if used improperly. Treat all chemicals as potential physical and health hazards. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. But why take a chance? The point we're trying to make is to treat all chemicals with respect read and follow the information printed on the label. The next step in the educational process is to know more information about the chemicals used in your job. Information about the chemicals you work with comes in two forms, the manufacturer's label on the product container and on safety data sheets that are developed by the chemical manufacturer. This SDS is provided by the manufacturer and contains information on each chemical. A chemical inventory is maintained, and if a new chemical cleaner or ink is introduced, a safety data sheet is requested and reviewed by your plant safety coordinator. The SDS serves several important functions. The information on the SDS is used to determine the type of safety equipment needed to protect you against potential hazards. The information is also the basis for policies and programs to reduce potential adverse physical and health hazards. This includes procedures on how you should safely use, store, handle, and dispose of a particular chemical. The information contained in the safety data sheet is available to all employees. If you're interested in more information about a specific chemical, all you have to do is contact your supervisor or safety coordinator. Quickly, let's review what type of information is contained on the data sheet. Section 1 provides product identification the manufacturer's name, and identifies the chemical and trade names of the substance. Section 2 lists the hazardous ingredients, including hazardous mixtures of liquids, solids, or gases. This section also provides information on any carcinogenic or cancer-causing components, if any are contained in the chemical. Section 3 explains the physical characteristics of the substance. This section provides information on flash points, solubility rate, evaporation rate, and other physical characteristics to help determine how to use the chemical safely. 
Section 4 deals with fire and explosion hazards and proper firefighting methods associated with the specific chemical. You'll also find the type of extinguisher that is needed to extinguish the material or chemical. Section 5 contains reactivity information, such as how the material reacts with other substances. Some materials may react violently with water or other chemicals. Section 6 is extremely important as it explains potential health hazards. As workers, you need to know if the substance is harmful and what precautions to take to reduce your potential exposure. Section 6 also includes emergency first aid and steps to be followed in case of emergency. Section 7 contains procedures for spills or leaks. We can't just wash spilled chemicals down the drain or mop them up and throw the residue in the trash. Each chemical has specific procedures that must be carefully followed. Section 8 explains the type of protective equipment or engineering controls required to reduce exposure. It may specify safety glasses, gloves, respirators, ventilation equipment, or other hygiene procedures. Although the forms used may be slightly different from manufacturer to manufacturer, safety data sheets must contain this information. The information on the data sheet is standard. It's your right to know, and the information is available. All you have to do is ask your supervisor. Last but not least is chemical signs and labels. Generally, every in-house chemical container, regardless of size, must be labeled with health, flammability, and reactivity information pertaining to its contents. Frequently, chemicals are shipped in larger containers that are properly labeled, but smaller containers used on the manufacturing floor may not be labeled with the same information. It's up to you to identify the contents of all chemical containers. There have been thousands of accidents and injuries because containers were mislabeled or not labeled at all. Hazard Communications, Your Right to Know, is a fancy title for being aware of potential hazards. Reading and following the precautionary information contained on chemical labels is your responsibility. If you want more information about a particular chemical, ask your supervisor or safety coordinator for the safety data sheet. This information won't do you any good if you don't put it to use. Chemicals in today's society are here to stay. Chemicals, many of which are safe to use, must be treated with respect. You must always follow the chemical manufacturer's recommendations and instructions. Never mix any chemicals unless you have been trained and authorized to do so. Even at home, improper mixing of chemicals can be extremely hazardous. If you mix a common household chlorine cleaner with ammonia, it can form a deadly gas called chloramine. Of course, avoid a very common mistake of thinking more is better. You've all done it, like adding just a bit more of the cleaner or liquid so it will do a better job. If the label specifies one tablespoon, don't think two or three tablespoons will work two or three times better. Follow the directions. Well, that's about it for now, but it's really up to you to work and act safely. Safety is your responsibility, and all the rules, regulations, policies, labels, or material safety data sheets won't do any good if you don't take the responsibility to perform every job safely. It will reduce accidents and injuries. Safety is part of that responsibility. Take time for safety, because it really does make a difference. Thank you.